were in Churchill, Manitoba, Canada, on the western shore of Hudson Bay, where we were living on the tundra buggy. We were about 50 miles outside of Churchill. And during the day, we would hear presentations. For a couple of the days, we did go out on uh, buggy 16, which is the actual driving buggy, and uh, went out and looked for polar bears. It was really incredible to be able to see a wild polar bear, you know, so close that if I wanted to, I could reach out and, and pet him, which, of course, we wouldn't want to do. So I had the opportunity for the first time ever to go on a helicopter ride, and I was very excited. I was slightly nervous when we were first taking off. But once we were actually in the air, it was a lot of fun being able to look out the window and see the whole beauty of the tundra below me. Standing on, it's called lichen, and it's very spongy, actually. Um, very spongy. It's, it's, it's similar to moss, uh, and it comes in many different colors, lots of other wildlife. There's even a arctic cranberries, as you can see all throughout out here. We ended up going to an abandoned maternal den site. Amazing up here. It's very wet and muddy, but uh, it's beautiful and this is it's just incredible It was an abandoned maternal den because it had partially collapsed So it wasn't actually as big as it normally would have been But it was really it was really cool to be able to actually climb inside and sit there and see and imagine You know a mother and her two cubs sleeping there during the winter We, we didn't get snow actually until the very last day when we left and it is a symptom of global climate change one of the when we were flying back to Winnipeg uh, on our last day a group of us were speaking with a native Inuit man and we were asking him you know just about his life and if this weather was normal or what what sort of things were normal for him and he said that he remembers only a few years ago when the snow came in mid-August and it's now mid-October and it's just barely beginning to snow it mainly impacts the polar bears because without the Arctic sea ice, they need the ice so that they can hunt, so that they can breed, so they can den. They can't do any of that without the ice. And they are so perfectly adapted to living in the Arctic and living in the harsh climate and on the ice that when they don't have their natural habitat like that, all they can do is really sleep in the kelp until they're able to go onto the ice and live as they normally would. The very little things really do help, and most people think that just because they're one person, oh, it won't make a difference, but each person really does make a difference, and they can either have a positive impact or a negative impact for the polar bears and for the Arctic. By simply changing your light bulbs to compact fluorescents, simply by, by using reusable bags instead of plastic at the grocery store, buying a reusable water bottle, unplugging your power strip at night, all these things, they seem simple and inconsequential, but they really do help. And even if the only thing you do is use a reusable water bottle, you're still having a positive impact in your own way. Each person can do whatever they're able to do, money-wise and uh, economically, but overall, whatever you choose to do, if it has a positive impact, then you're helping the polar bears, and that's what's really important.